Welcome back, everyone, for the, our final game of the night. It's coming right up, and 100 Thieves are taking on the Golden Guardians. Now, despite coming into Week 8 with sole possession of ninth place, 100 Thieves are still in the running for playoffs with their win over Optic Gaming yesterday. Kind of crazy that the team that wasn't ninth can get all the way up to fourth yep. three games. But, hey, we're here. Levi, Parody, baby. We're here. Levi was joining this team late into the split, so we were kind of saying, you know, he would need to hard carry his team for a shot at playoffs. Every game from here on out is a must-win to keep that dream alive. But fortunately for 100 Thieves, they have a relatively easy matchup here to close out Week 8. We talk about them being the only team in possession of ninth. Well, Golden Guardians is the only team in possession of 10th. They're the only team below 100 Thieves in the standings and are already eliminated from playoff contention. All right, Golden Guardians now get a chance to play spoiler for most of their remaining matches, but it's really the opportunity, like we were saying before, for these games of players to show and prove that they're worth holding on to and investing into the summer split and beyond. Well, there's no reason to delay any further, so let's go ahead and get into the starting lineups. On the blue side, it's 100 Thieves with Kaizen in the top lane, Levi, that import in the jungle, Linsanity mid, Rikara bottom, and Wyan supporting. And over on the red side, it's Golden Guardians Academy in the top lane, Jenkins. Jungling for them is Potluck, Mopchin in the mid lane with Jurassic and Special down there in the bot lane. Now, last game, Mark, I said when we were talking about TSM, do you think we're going to get to see something really crazier off the wall? Any new experimental new strats? And he said, I don't think so. It's not the TSM brand. They also didn't know if they were going to be playing for a spot or not today. They'll probably take it really seriously. What about Golden Guardians? You think we're going to see them shake things up? Yeah, a there's bit? still some mathematical world where, like we said, TSM is alive. Mm -hmm. Not true for Golden Guardians. They, they're they dead. They're out of the playoff. The math game. says it. They are done. So I think if you're looking for some crazy shenanigans, this is most likely your game. I'm all about the shenanigans, Mark. Let's see what we can get into here today. Okay, what is with these blue side Skarners? I'm... I, I would guess that potentially Zaya has risen up in priority above it, and you don't want to trade Zaya for Skarner. Uh, and so you ban out the Skarner, but I'm not sure. I, I haven't really thought through all the implications. What's crazy is that Red Sides won every game today and if they keep getting the one or keeping the ones to get Zaya Rakan. Yeah. Which is strange to me. I don't very strange. I don't know what's going on. Very strange indeed. Let's see how the bands are shaping up. Camille, Skarner, Rise, all taken off the table by 100 Thieves. Golden Guardians, Kha'Zix, Azir, and somebody Olaf. Alright. Yep, the Galio's still up, getting rid of some of those run at you and kill you with the yeah. <laughs> damage reduction that the Galio gives, so pretty understandable. Scion first pick again. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Scion locked in. These teams really placing a lot of importance on this champion. A lot of priority. Zaya, Galio. Galio, locked in. If they do this backwards, is just to spite me. Smart. No, I, I'm going to give you credit. If oh. they still get right. Oh, nope. It's not even spite. You were wrong. You were only half right. You were also half wrong. And that rounds up to fully wrong. That's the math. Well, here comes the Zaya Rakan on 100 Thieves side then, most likely. Let's see if they go for it. I mean, it feels hard to resist at this point, to be quite honest. Why would you? Yeah, and it's one of those know? things, too, where I'm not sure why you don't take the Zaya first, because then they need to split up the Rakan, and that's one of their first picks. And then they can't take Galio, Sejuani, and Scion. And you get so you get some stuff in return. Or they don't break it up, and they take that anyways. It seems suspect. I, yeah, I'm, I'm still a little up in the air. Um, you know, it's one of the things that potentially from the outside, I have tunneled onto Zyra Khan after all my conversations with Jad, and we're just like, oh my god, it's winning every Zyra game. Khan, Zyra Khan, Zyra Khan. It's up 17 CS at 15 minutes. Like, hey, maybe people should start breaking this up, but not this time around. They go with Close. the forest, and that indicates uh, that, you know, they're looking for potentially one of those all-in lanes that can abuse the squishiness of a Khan. We saw the, the Varus Leona be one of the things that worked in the past up against the Zaya Rakan type of lane. So maybe that's the kind of thing they decide to go for. Going into the second phase, Golden Guardians with the respect ban towards Levi getting that Lee Sin off the table. Yep, getting that one. We saw Moon's Evelyn today did not work out, despite also having Zaya Rakan. Didn't work. Thinking emoji. Thinking emoji. But that was against, like you said, that Varus Leona counter pick lane. So yep. they did have a, a bit of a strategy for it. And you can't. That was also the Demonte Cassiopeia God. Yeah. Just destroying everything from the mid lane. So Yeah, maybe not the best sample to uh, make sweeping generalizations. Golden Guardians has also seen what Levi can do on the Jacks, wanting to ban that one away from the jungle there. 
So really trying to pick on that jungler. It is a little surprising to see that, um, you know, that they, the enemy team already has their top laner, so there's no bans there. Also, they're winning on their top laner. They have their mid, jungle, and AD carry. The enemy team has support, so, you know, what are you, what are you really trying to ban here? Maybe mid laners, but they go for jungles instead. Yeah. Jax I don't love because while Levi did look good on it, it's not quite like a take over the game and maul your face off, which is what you're more concerned about with Levi. That's true. Okay. Final ban for this game will be Shen from 100 Thieves Academy, along with the Alistair they already banned it. There you go, Varus Leona. They're saying, all right, this is the counter pick. This is what you take in as Iricon. Yeah, and I, I understand why they banned away the Shen, because you, if you're going to go aggressive down the bot lane, you don't want to have to deal with the Shen protecting them, or you don't want to have to worry about a Shen diving if they're going for a kill lane. So Shen ban, I do like that one a lot, but I'm a little surprised to see the Alistar ban over the Leona when Leona Varus is so commonly seen as the counter pick to this lane that you have for yourself. A little surprising. And there we see the Rek'Sai. side. All right, we see the Rek'Sai side picked up, and we see Cassiopeia yet again today. It's 100% win rate so far. Can the Thieves keep it up? Yeah, it's into the Galio this time around. Lin Sanity versus Bob Chin. Uh, two of the mid laners who have been struggling a little bit in Academy to stand out and can have consistent performances. This will be a good test to see if Cassio can control the Galio quite like we saw before. And Ayo. Hey all right. Get him, Scarl. Locked up player in the top lane. Yeah, I got to see that against the Scion. We got to see the Riven earlier today. We get to see the Kled and Scarl, and it's going to be fun. Yeah, we saw, uh, I think it was Cloud9 do it against Clutch Gaming, where Licorice destroyed Solo with the help of his team, as well as of the fact course, that there were some close skirmishes. I believe that was the matchup. It's not a one versus one game. It's 5v5. You always got to keep all those factors in mind, but... Looking at this game, you've got the Zyra Rakan, you've got the Cassiopeia, you've got these three elements that have been very successful before on the side of 100 Thieves, but that Varus Leona counterpick that we talked about, that's there on the side of the Golden Guardians, as well as potentially this Kled counterpick, along with the Galio that we've also seen a lot of plays on. Yeah, I do like Golden Guardians comp fair amount here. We always, like we said, harp on the Zyra Rakan, but there are other things going on, and so having side lane pressure, Side lane kill threat with a Galio who can combo in with all that stuff is a good combination. And I, it's one of those things where you can just blow them up and, and keep doing that over and over. Wait for their summoners to be on cooldown and kind of take advantage of them. The thing you have to be concerned about, though, is Levi on this Rek'Sai. We've seen it a little bit here in Academy. I think we're still waiting for its debut in the LCS. But with the Tracker's Knife being removed and with Rek'Sai having some very unique gank paths, this is a champion that some people have tried to bring back. Uh, find some early game action, and potentially we can see that out of Levi here. And it's not just her early game gank paths that I'm interested in. It's the fact that she has early game vision advantages mm -hmm. in a world that's now much less populated with vision. Yeah, those tremors being very useful, not just in the early game and invades, but also in the late game when you're trying to control around Baron buff, you have that little bit of extra vision to see where they're coming from because you don't have quite as many wards to throw down. So. The Rek'Sai pick makes a lot of sense in the current meta. It just hasn't been extremely effective. So we're going to see if Levi, taking a crack at it this time, can do better. Well, Levi, like we said, he came to this team late. He had a bit of a delayed start here in the North American Academy League Spring Split 2018. And communication is a big thing for this guy. Still working on those English skills, being able to communicate what he wants to do with the rest of the team. And that can be a very real thing. Like, that's something that we can't really downplay because mm -hmm. whether or not you can properly communicate what's happening in the moment and what your goal is and what you're trying to accomplish with a certain play can be the difference between succeeding or failing. And the communication issues don't stop with in-game. When you get out of the game, you're going through VOD review, trying to discuss with your teammates what is going right or wrong can become a lot more difficult as we see some heavy trading level one there. Yeah, Jurassic loses quite a lot of his health. The Ignite already popped by Wyan, so really wanted to go aggro at that level one. You do not see any summoner spells burned by Golden Guardians in retaliation, so they've got the summoner advantage for now. Honestly, Small not summoner too bad advantage. for them, I guess. I mean, it's not like you're going to be swapping that out for a TP on Leona. She does go after Shock, no summoner spell book, so. Right, and, and the thing to note too is Golden Guardians comp, we talked a lot about it, really becomes a lot more powerful at six. So Juana gets stronger then, Galio gets unlocked then, this Varus Leon lane gets its chain CC combo at six. Uh, and that's really when Levi has his most work to do. So, you know, if you're playing this Varus Leona lane, you don't have to take every level one trade. It is a Zyrakon still with that W steroid going nuts on you. Makes things hard. I'm also going to be keeping eyes on this mid lane 
with Lin Sanity versus Bob Chin. Because remember, this is the exact same matchup that Sun struggled in so heavily earlier in the Clutch Gaming matchup where he was having to deal with Demonte's Cassiopeia Jenkins. Megan Kaizen have a bit of a struggle here in the top side as well. The shield will negate some of the damage from those violent tendencies, but Jenkins still doing pretty good for himself. Yep, uh, it's a matchup that, you know, it does feel like Kled can get the advantage in, but will maybe need some jungler assistance to do so. You see the shield proc come out, makes the trade not too bad. Gets another bear trap on a rope, hits him again. Pocket pistol comes through as well. I love the ability name for Kled because it's just so much, this is exactly what it is. Bear trap on a rope. Can Jenkins get out though? He knows that Sanity's coming up behind him. He gets his mount back, wants to try to get away. The Miasma keeps him down. Bear Trap on a rope will not find its way onto a Cassiopeia. And First Blood goes the way of the Snake Lady yet again. And a very different approach to showing what you can do with that pressure in the mid lane. Usually it's harassing under turret, trying to hold the Galio down. This time, when Sanity actually makes his way up to the top side and gets the kill early on. Gonna buy some nice space for Kaizen. He's gonna go back, buy some early defensive stats. Who needs an early game aggressive jungler when you have an early game aggressive mid laner to make your ganks happen for you? And Levi's more than happy to move into the mid lane and be like, oh, you're missing? I'll take that. Don't bar. worry, I'll, I'll just soak this up for you, man. It won't go to waste. You have my word. So you see, this, this matchup's pretty interesting. You get the remounts for your extra HP, but Scion has a lot of shields and stuff he can constantly pull from. Despite missing some of his damage here, he's already baited Bob Chin, or excuse me, um, Kaizen in far enough to get this kill. Jenkins getting caught out, tries to trade back, holds on to his flash, doesn't want to waste it, knows he's probably dead to rights, and he's thinking, maybe I can get the trade kill back. Doesn't actually end up happening, though. Yeah, I like keeping the flash there, not wanting to expend that, because then you go from giving up a death to giving up a death and being really vulnerable to the next one. Right, so, exactly. Solid choice there from Jenkins, I think. Looks like a good thought process to be going with. That will take 100 Thieves Academy up to a 400, 500 gold lead though, which is pretty good early on in the game with a lot of that money going onto the Cassiopeia. Pretty much the entirety of that lead on yeah. the Cassiopeia, so. Top lane assist helping negate the fact that he's about 10 CS behind. The wave is in a nice spot for Jenkins, so hopefully he can keep farming up, building that lead and getting to the point where he can threaten some solo kills. Levi walking over a trinket ward there. Just trying to keep an eye on where everybody is. Maybe get some tremor sense there of that Sejuani and where she might be located. Moves back into his own jungle. Wants to keep farming up. The Cassiopeia in the mid lane. A much better job being done by Bob Chin. Keeping up with the Cassiopeia than what we saw from Sonic Special going in here in the bottom lane onto Wyan and Rikara. The counterattack comes through though. X Special could be in a lot of trouble having to flash away. Rikara wants to go after him. Gonna need some more auto attack damage to make this one happen. But there's gonna be more people involved very shortly if they aren't careful. Both sides will back away. A little surprised to see Rikara commit the flash there. Getting close to level six. I understand you want that kill, but it's very dangerous now when they do hit six. Potluck going after Levi on this one, dropping the red smite, trying to challenge him to that one versus one, recognizing he has the health advantage, but Levi wants nothing to do with it. Nope, gonna back out there, special potting up, trying to get back to healthy. To get the ignite out, that's all fine. Special lost his flash, that's great for 100 Thieves and trying to limit their level six aggression. But now that Rakara has last, lost his as well, you have to be really concerned about these kind of flash var assaults that are going to be coming at you in a couple seconds. Especially with the Leona, considering uh, one CC means you get hit by about three more of them. Oh, so, yeah. Not a situation anybody likes to be in. Jenkins, again, going to look for Kai's in here. Find some decent damage, but, I mean, it's Scion. You're going to have to whittle him down slowly but surely if you want to have a chance at killing him. Yeah, he does have six now, so can stick with him a little bit. Scion can alt down the lane, end up chasing him. Of course, the issue is for Jenkins, when you're that low on health for your Scarl bar, it means that if you initiate, you're almost immediately going to be dismounted. So you will lose a good bit of your kit and your playmaking opportunity just for going in in a situation like that. I can understand him just kind of wanting to farm this one out right now. Still about that 500 gold lead we were talking about earlier on in this game. Bob Chin continues to go even in CS here in the mid lane with Lin Sanity on the Galio. The Aftershock, of course, will make it difficult to go on to him like we've talked about before in the past with the Galio builds, building AP and still being very tanky. Lin Sanity being given a blue buff, though, exactly where you want your Cassiopeia to be. Yep, got the tier. Now you're going to be able to spam out abilities non-stop, stack that thing up real quick. We saw the Scion alt back to the top lane. Both top laners have ults that they can use for map mobility. Those kind of mini teleports in some sense. And 
I mean, this is the kind of breaking point we're waiting for now. People are getting very close to level 6 in the bot lane. They have it in the mid lane. Junglers have it. Top laners have it. Once these guys get it, you think all of the fights are coming. All right, all the fights got to be turning on sometime. All the switches have been flipped. Everybody should be ready to go. But if you're looking at fights, you're looking at why would we have a fight? And unfortunately today, Mark, Cloud Drake. First Drake coming around the bend, and it's the best one. That's the one that nobody wants to fight for, though. Best one. That's Yeah, he's the best one. That's why nobody wants to kill him. They like keeping him alive because he's everyone's favorite. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what it is. Uh, I mean, even despite the fact that the dragon's not ideal, you do tend to pick this Varus Leona lane for the fact that you can kill them. So we'll see if they actually try and do that six, even if the objective you're fighting as a, you know, getting as a result isn't ideal. Well, you've got six on both your junglers. There's playmaking opportunity all around. Bob Chin gonna be given this blue buff down from Potluck. Let's off the winds of war, grabs that for himself. He'll now have the ability to deal with some of that Cassiopeia shoving power. You do see the CS lead going a bit more in the way of the Cassiopeia now. The pressure Linsanity got from that blue buff, providing him just some extra leverage there in the mid lane as Levi looks for the opportunity to go in here on the bottom side, and there they go. It's gonna be a three versus two. The damage coming in. Jurassic in some trouble. The counter attack is out. Potluck not gonna be there in time immediately. Levi popping the ult to drop the aggro, but he'll still likely fall one for one. They still have a minion wave two here, so they can potentially keep moving forward. 80 carry for jungler. Not the best trade. Could have gone a little bit better. He's gonna keep pressuring down this turret. Doesn't look like they're gonna get much with it though. The minion wave is about to die. And during this time, Cyan canceled his, so he's still up in the top lane pushing. One for one. One for one. I mean, for Golden Guardians, you gotta be happy about that, considering they were the ones having to respond. And they'll still continue leaving everybody down here. They really want this first turn. Uh, not too bad, as they actually have Morris going up to the top side already. So they can be a little bit ahead on this play. Uh, this could lead to a really weird map situation as Zion Rakan started moving down the bot lane. They actually decided to change their path, breaking back up to the top side, not wanting to mismatch the lanes. Here's this fight, though. You see it starts out jumping onto Jurassic. He kind of gets exploded. Uh, didn't really flash any of the incoming CC. It's very hard to do versus Rakan, all things considered, though. But uh, Levi had flashed in to get the chain CC knockup, and then he has no way out. So he's what gets traded back for us. Sejuani was in the area to fight. Rakara now in the top side. Jurassic now in the top side. It's the classic, like you're talking about. The turret goes down. The bottom lane goes top. The top lane goes bottom. So everything has been flipped topsy-turvy now, but it's still a super close game. Gold advantage actually in the way of Golden Guardians now, considering they got that turret first blood gold bonus for themselves. Jurassic thinking about maybe making a play here, but instead it's gonna be turned around right back onto him, three versus three. The cavalry has arrived and the Golden Guardians bring in the Galio. He's not even required. Potluck grabs the kill on the Levi. It's a lot of abilities used there. I mean, it was very scary. Jurassic did get jumped off for the second time, but he still had a summoner, so he was able to stay alive much healthier this time. Uh, and then the rest of Golden Guardians, like we said, kind of baiting that one, pull it off. But the Galio ultimate, the Scarl, Kled ultimate may be a little over the top. But they're gonna get their second turn of the game off it, so things are looking good. Better overkill yeah. than missed a kill. Yeah. You wanna make sure that you get yourself those objectives, snowball this lead, and Golden Guardians right now gotta be feeling good about where they're standing. You take this one down, you put yourself up to about one and a half thousand gold ahead. You're taking over more of the map. You're getting yourself moving, which is what you wanna see from a team that, like we said, this is their opportunity to show off who they are as individual players. Show that they deserve a spot in summer. Show that this team has a greater ceiling and they can achieve that. It doesn't look like they're gonna lose too much on the map either. Uh, some damage down the bot lane turret, but they're able to grab the Rift Herald in response. The mid lane was largely fine. So while it might look like they use a lot of abilities unnecessarily, there's no actual gold going over. The only thing you can say is Kaizen now has a CS lead because ended up in the side lane two times in a row. I want to go ahead and point out as well, if you're looking at the items being built by both sides as these tanks get into a one versus one that Levi will be joining here shortly. Looking to stop Jenkins, who flashes away, but is it enough? More CC comes through, he will be dismounted, but the dismount actually blocks the extra CC from the Scion ulti, which may be the difference here, but it will not be. 100 Thieves still find the kill. Yeah, a bit of a crazy fight there. Jenkins able to live a really long time, but the execute damage coming in from that new Rexile. I can't believe I call it that new. That thing's old. 
Yeah, it's old at this point. It still yeah. feels new because we're still so used to thinking of old Rek'Sai of Farm Alarm. Farm Alarm, hey! She's coming back to clear her rates again. Look out! Yeah. I missed that chance. <laughs> that champion was such a meme. Just build full tank and run around farming. Camp. I loved it! You put some tunnels up in the down your bot lane, you gank the top lane, they try and punish the flip side, you know, map play, you all back down there. I loved it. I felt like it was the <laughs> thinking man's jungler. The thinking man's the thinking jungler. man's jungler. Well, Levi is thinking at least he's got two out of three kill participation so far. Even though things haven't gone fantastically for him, he's still only a couple hundred gold behind. He's still building tank Rek'Sai, so he's not in the spot where it's like, oh yeah, I'm doing Warrior Cleaver Rek'Sai and I've got to be ahead, otherwise I'm just squishy and I die. He's gone for the Cinder Hulk. He's still going to be effective as an initiation mechanism. Absolutely. And, you know, he's been making good plays, maybe a little over aggressive on the first one. This time around, though, does oh, uh, get a turret back in their favor. You see the goal is actually pretty close because the kind of overcommitment that we were talking about that Golden Guardians was making on their plays uh, leads to them falling behind in some of the CS categories here. So the Cassiopeia ahead, Scion ahead, Rek'Sai obviously ahead. That's a very quick farming champion. So a good start by Golden Guardians in this game, but they're, they haven't done everything they need to yet. And that's, I think, one of the things that you can always look at when you're comparing one of the lower tier teams to some of the upper tier teams, is in a similar situation, in a similar game, if Golden Guardians was one of the top tier teams in the league, you would think that the gold lead would be more advantageous considering the turret lead they had got for themselves and sort of where they were sitting. But not being able to build those advantages is one of the reasons why Golden Guardians haven't found the success they were hoping for. Absolutely, and it's not the kind of thing that doesn't mean you can't win. I mean, we saw no. that in the remake of the CLG FlyQuest game. When FlyQuest had an advantage at 20 minutes with a bunch of kills, you know, it was a 6K gold lead. But when CLG had 1 to 5 advantage in kills, they were 1,000 1, gold yeah, up. 1,000. So, so it's it's just where the strengths of the teams lie in different places. And Golden Guardians has not been a particularly lane dominant team, so it's no surprise to see their early game plays not necessarily netting them monster advantages. At the same time, this is a similar situation to that second game you were just talking exactly. about where there's 1,000 gold separating the teams. This isn't some doomsday situation for Golden Guardians where they're so far behind, it's like, how do we even catch up? Yeah, you're a bit behind, but you still got a couple of turrets, so you're not bleeding map pressure. The gold's a little bit against you just because you don't have the farm, but there's still opportunities to outplay and make plays, which is really what you want to see for this team. That's how you can prove that you are a team with a lot of room for improvement is show your ability to make those moves, get involved, and really take the driver's seat. Yeah, they have a little bit of time left on this Rift Herald. Want to see them use it to break this last turret. Galio recalling, though. Sashwani kind of far behind. We'll see if they can do anything with it. Feels like 100 Thieves is ready for this one. Three men in the mid lane. There's that Rift Herald. Womp womp. I mean, at that point, you have to use it just because it's going to expire. So it's just throw it out there and hope it maybe does something. But as you said, the Thieves are pretty ready for this one. They want to put as much damage into Shelly as possible before she charges to weaken the damage of the charge. She makes it all the way to the turret. Hurts it about eh, a little under half HP. And she's gone. Rip Shelly. Rip Shelly. You will be remembered. Swept away means less vision, less playmaking opportunity, especially in Jurassic. Still just hanging out here in the mid lane. Jurassic, well, what I was going to comment on before the fight in the bottom lane, Jurassic did go for the tabby rush before anything else. It slowed down his rage blade a little bit. But he still has that Rage Blade completed first and foremost. We always talk about Varus being one of those champions that has such a strong one item power spike compared to what you would expect from a typical crit stacking champion like what the Zaya is or what you would see from something like a Caitlyn. So maybe this is Golden Guardian's chance to do something. And it's one of those things where if they had broken out into a, a fight around Dragon or something and the Varus doesn't have his Rage Blade and you see his damage is lacking, then maybe you can criticize the early defensive item choice, but right. didn't get in any of those situations. Sanity trying to outplay the two versus one here, flashing forward towards Expecial, who turns it around with the CC and flashes away Expecial with the Juke Boots on, gets himself out. Still almost died. That last Q by Cassiopeia lands, and I believe the kill, uh, no, doesn't have the runes for that one. Close on the counts and horseshoes and hand grenades, Mark. He got out. 
he got out, but once again, a lot of resources used there. That was three to four people up at the top side. And now the clan charges into the fight. They're able to find some lockdown there onto Rakar. The Golden Guardian still looking to make more plays happen here. They lock down Levi. They burst him down before he can get away. Kaizen, Rakara, Wyan, they managed to hobble out of this one, but it's still two dead on the side of 100 Thieves and the Golden Guardians coming up making play. And this time they have a minion wave to work with with their AD carry. This should be the third turret of the game for them, the last outer turret. 100 Thieves getting a little bit too greedy. They feel like they've been punishing Golden Guardians' aggression by not actually trying to counter the play and instead moving and pushing on the flip side of the map. But that time they still have plenty of engage tools left, and in particular the Kledalt being able to escort the entire team towards that action. It's one of those things where basically a Civer ult, so you have to keep that in mind if you're going to go for some kind of objective trades here. Let's take one more look at it. The charge comes out. There you go. Yep. Able to get down there. Bob Chin able to get in there as well. The Galio having the global to get in with the rest of the team. The one kill, the two kills. Cassiopeia was still respawning at that point. But what? Gold lead's still very, very even. It's yeah, one of those things. Game you, mark. You see the Golden Guardians plays, and you're like, I like what they're doing. But the gold does not fully agree with them. Still going to be a very close game. You can see how it's all spread out. Top lane, pretty much even. Jungle, pretty much even. Mid lane, pretty much even. Bottom lane, pretty much even. And support is actually the biggest disparity among all five roles, with X Special with his three assists having more money. And it's a position that it's not really going to have a huge deal to, you know. He's got an extra ruby crystal worth of money. Right. It uh, might finish his Aegis a little bit faster and then maybe gets his banner. Maybe that's important if they get a Baron in the next, it could be, three minutes. Uh, and here's the thing. While the goal lead isn't increasing, the fact that Golden Guardians consistently are finding pickoffs is still a really good sign because eventually that Baron will spawn about 20 seconds out now. And then when they start baiting people and the fact that they consistently find people, Levi's died a couple times, three deaths. You kill him one more time with a Baron buff up, near Baron buff, you might have just won the game. Golden Guardians will definitely have to keep eyes open for any kind of a win condition they can find. And you can see on your screen right now, EU rebroadcast coming up next after the conclusion of this game here today. In case you missed any of the action from our friends across the pond earlier this morning, you can immediately catch up on that following Academy here on this same channel, twitch.tv slash Riot Games. So if EU sounds like a good time to you, then stick around once we're done because there's plenty of good times on the way. If you're Golden Guardians, the good times continue in the enemy jungle, invading, putting down some of that vision, taking away the camps, and just continuing to try to build this lead. Yeah, Cloud Drake's gonna spawn in 10 seconds. Doesn't feel like too much priority for either team gonna be down there, but Jenkins does have a bit of split push pressure, so maybe he clears a wave, meets up there, kind of solos it. We'll have to see how they decide to play that. Jenkins and Kaizen, this fight between these two is just, it's hit the point where it doesn't really do anything anymore. I mean, Jenkins hurts him. Kaizen doesn't do a lot of damage, but Kaizen doesn't take any damage either, so... A bruiser fell behind in a matchup where the tank was able to build armor items. So, yeah, like you were saying... Somewhere out there, Hashinshin feels a tingle in the back of his mind. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't show him this game. Uh, it's, it's definitely the case, though, where, like, okay, you have Tabby's, Frozen Heart, and you're building a Righteous Glory on Kaizen. It's no surprise that an item and a half, Kled, cannot hurt you. That's actually, as far as I'm concerned, correct in how the game should look. A 1-0-1 one one Scion with equal farm and two and a half armor items. Able to survive the Kled rather easily, especially, yeah. I mean, Kled's got Black Cleaver with the basic Tiamat. It's not like there's a ton of damage here, so you would expect Jenkins to kind of just have to reach equilibrium with the Scion right now. You can't bully him around, can't force him away anymore. And I expect, you know, depending on how split push focus he wants to go with this build, eventually he will get to a point where he can start threatening the Scion a little bit more. Like you said, get the Black Cleaver finish. Get the Titanic Hydra finish. Do you go Phantom Dancer third? Some people will go with that when they're going for the split push focus build. And at that point, maybe you're starting to really hurt him, but it is hard to do right now. Well, the Righteous Glory also means the Scion's gonna have plenty of extra initiation potential. The Banshee's Veil on the Cassiopeia coming up right after that Seraph's Embrace is a little bit of a departure from the Leandries that we've seen in the past couple of games from Cassio's, but it does mean that it's going to be harder to catch her out with some of the CC. So I kind of like this adaptation. I do like it as well because while there are three and a half, four tanks, however you want to put it, on the side of Golden Guardians, which makes you think, oh, long sustained fight. I should build a DPS item. It's like, well, they're going to try and blow you up instantly. 
Yep, and surviving that is way more important so that you can actually do your DPS. So you can't do any damage if you're dead. Mark. Exactly, so I like the Banshee's Veil pickup. It can still get poked off relatively easily if Jurassic's able to find them with a Q or Galio with the Winds of War or anything, but it's still better to force them to have to pass more of a checklist to be able to pick you off. 100 Thieves might get picked off right here. Ooh. That's the next level one right there. That is... Unfortunate for Jurassic, missing the Chains of Corruption. It's now the 100 Thieves are deciding this is their opportunity to make the counterattack. The Galio ulti comes in to get Whoa. Bobchin out of trouble. He lands and his health is almost completely gone as the counterattack from Jenkins will mount, but they don't have the help. Their carries are going to be incredibly low for this. Jenkins is not on the same page with the rest of the team, and it results in his death. 100 Thieves take the fight. That was a crazy fight. I don't know what happened to Bob Chan. I saw that alt coming in on the target on the left side as opposed to his AD carry, which was getting chunked out. And I was, I like, was like, what's going on? He totally misclicked, but it was actually the right thing to do because if he land next to his AD carry, he's probably dead. They are able to TP back in. They're going to be able to protect this turret. Doesn't look like there's going to be any objective repercussions from this. Uh, instead, they just find that third kill onto Jenkins. And that feels good for Golden Guardians because we talked about them not necessarily translating the kills into more gold leads, but... When you can stop your opponents from translating a kill into a gold lead, that's a mark of success as well. Yeah, absolutely. A, a situation where if Jurassic died there, you start losing that mid lane turret, things start looking a lot, lot scarier. All right, Bobchin will continue pushing up and farming. Still even with this Cassiope after all this time, by the way. Like, very different game. Very, very different from what we saw in Echo Fox versus Clutch Gaming. Golden Guardians continue to push into the enemy jungle, and I like how they never stop this. Even after a potential bad fight in the mid lane, they're constantly pushing into enemy territory, stealing those buffs away. And here we go. Mark Golden Guardians forcing the issue, forcing the fight, going on to the Cassiopeia. Chain CC coming down. Lin Sanity going to be in some trouble. Wyan's already gone. Lin Sanity still alive, able to find the kill onto the Golden Guardians AD carry. Still putting out that damage. Bobchin gets him with the Winds of War, finds the double kill. Levi wants to move here into the fight. Kaizen looking to run away as Rakara falls to Jenkins. And the Golden Guardians strike gold on this one big time, pulling them right back into the fight. Kaizen, wanting to escape from this one, might have the opportunity to do so, but the Chain CC is there. The dead body unlikely to find much of anything. And Golden Guardians go one for four. That's a fight where a lot of stuff happened that felt like it wasn't quite working right. Linsanity runs way too far far on the Cassiopeia, gets his Banshee's Veil broken by the Leona E, but what's great about that ability is it will still pull you to the target. So the fact that you break it and still get the, the gap closer on Leona's huge, get the follow-up CC. But watch what happens with the backline, particularly Varus. Cassiopeia is going to get her ult off, and Baron is going to be hitting her. They get a couple more damage there. Linsane flashes forward to get that kill. Nice isolated by the backside. Going to die to the Galio, and then this whole time, no front line for Rakara. Kaizen wasn't able to get over there in time. Levi was back in base, which is what kind of prompted this whole fight to begin with. And then for some reason, Levi doesn't go to protect his tank here. You would have thought he could start body blocking some of these skills coming in. Doesn't body block the Sejuani W, doesn't body block the bear trap on a rope, doesn't knock anyone up, just watches his teammate die. But that said, they did not actually get the bear at the end of that. And they make the pick on the Linsanity here, though. Like specials initiation, not going to find the mark just yet. Instead, they're able to find the follow-up. Linsanity going to be juggled around, almost brought down, still kept alive so critically. But he will eventually fall. Rakara cannot get himself away immediately. Also going to be going down here. Kaizen is number three. It's a double kill over to the side of Jurassic and the rest of the Golden Guardians. Kaizen's passive will not find anyone yet again. And the Guardians are right back on the fair. The second fight in a row that they find these kills at Baron. This is exactly what we were saying they needed to do to win this game. They've pulled ahead in the gold lead now. 4,000 as the kills have started flying in their favor. They get the Baron finally, and they're ready to take complete control of this game. We came into this game saying Golden Guardians, maybe they don't have anything to fight for, but they can play spoiler. And they are spoiling 100 Thieves right now, building these leads, making these plays, taking these fights. 5,000 gold up. Baron in the pocket, this is where you want to be 23 minutes into a game. And I really want to highlight 26 minutes. Uh, item choice by Special. He has Locket here, which is why they're able to kind of win this fight. You're going to see how many of these fights end up with targets super low on the side of Golden Guardians. But he gets that Locket damage in there, protects some of his carries. You see how low they all get. Rakara's trying to kite out, almost staying alive. Ends up going down despite doing his best. Kaizen's not actually able to find any kills either. And there's a number of members who are going to walk away pretty low. And that locket 
doing so much more than a banner of command would from an even game state. Expecial himself is 200 and 22% dead there if he doesn't have that locket. Uh -huh. He walked away from that fight with had to be 10 HP. The locket saves him, and now Golden Guardians pushing down the mid lane. They've got control of the entire map. They've got the Infernal Drake for themselves. The world is their oyster, and they're looking for a pearl. They may have just found it in the bannered up cannon minion as they push down the mid lane. Inhibitor turret doesn't stand a chance. Inhibitor will stand about as much of one as that falls down only 28 minutes into this game now. Golden Guardians will continue to apply this pressure for another two minutes with this Baron buff. Yeah, really great play out of them. I like the decision to back out there. Sometimes we criticize teams for not continuing to use that bannered up uh, Baron minion. It can end the game because the enemy hasn't dealt with it yet. But against a team with Zaya, Rakan, Sion, I don't think you want to be taking a fight pinned in the enemy's base just to protect a cannon creep. So I understand their decision there not to risk a fight under two in uh, Nexus turrets. 100 Thieves setting up maybe a death brush here. Mm -hmm. Thinking maybe he steps up a little bit too far. Maybe Jenkins gets a little big for his britches on the Kled, but I don't think it's going to happen today, Mark. I don't think the Golden Guardians, the way they've been playing, are going to fall into that kind of a trap. And I also want to point out real quick, stopwatch on Jenkins. Bought that for the Guardian Angel. Mm -hmm. So there is a potential outplay there, as now the Golden Guardians may have found themselves caught out. Nice pick onto a special 100 Thieves. This is their opportunity. Potluck will also go over for free. That's exactly what the Thieves needed. Really good job there by 100 Thieves who stun, uh, stem the bleeding. They lost their mid lane inhibitor. That's not the end of the world, though. You have really nice wave clear with Zaya, able to deal with those kind of super creeps very easily. You're going to lose this top inner turret, but totally fine trade to protect yourself for the rest of the uh, Baron buff. Get some gold back in your pockets. Just a situation where I don't think they realized how many people were in lane. They had seen the Zaya and Rakan previously, but didn't know the rest of the team was there. You also have TPs coming in, joining in on that. So. Nice play by them. Find those two kills. And stall this game out a little bit because you should have the scaling advantage here. You have Casio, Zaya, two of the best scaling champions in the game right now in the meta. You have a sick front line with the Scion, Rek'Sai, Rakan. The enemy team has a lot of dive, but if they can't kill you, you can probably win these fights. As long as you can survive that initial burst of damage in CC, I mean, what's left to kill Insanity after the Expecial combo is down, after the big Sejuani ult is gone, after Galio has made his entrance, Linsanity gets to run wild at that point if he's still alive. It just takes time to get him to the point where he can be alive. And the critical thing is that his summoners are back up. That was one of the things he was lacking in that fight that lost them. Baron was in the previous fight he had used them, uh, which they still lost. This time he has them up, so hopefully they can use that to win one of these fights, negate one of these engages, cleanse and flash the right abilities. Hopefully you can win it. All right, Wyan goes in, looking to start this one off. The Scion also charging here into the fight. Jenkins taken very low. The counterattack comes out from Golden Guardians, able to find the lockdown onto Linsanity, but more CC. Whoa. Multiple knockups. Golden Guardians are absolutely destroyed. It's going to be a clean sweep for the side of 100 Thieves. They've managed to find themselves everyone, and it's ace for nothing. Oh, Clyde's still alive. Got a little bit of fight left. It's going to take a moment. My statement still stands, Mark. That was damn good from 100 feet. That chain CC combo under the turret was so, so clean. Textbook. Awesomely played by 100 Thieves. That was incredible to watch. They could not have executed that better. And there's Let's a lot a of things that go on here where on the side of Golden Guardians, their engage is not clean. They go onto multiple different targets at different points. So it starts out with Wyan going in. They get the Galio counter engage. They step outside the circle, and now it's the Galio that's too far forward. So they start focusing him down. Then the Boris ultimate was on the back line, but they're still in range to be doing all the damage. Everyone groups up. Four-man knockup, four-man Zio roots. They get all that damage down onto everyone. Their AoE team fighting is perfect. Jurassic can't get away. The Kled can't get away those last two kills, giving them that ace. That CC was a thing of beauty. The Scion knockup into the Rakan, you just don't get any better than that. And for 100 Thieves, that's the kind of thing that can bring you right back into this game. Oh, yeah, big time. I mean, you look at the gold, it's back to even completely. And you're going to have now a game where the Elder Dra or Infernal Dragon's up in a minute and a half. The Baron is up in a minute and a half. 
So you're going to have your inhib respawning as well. There's going to be a lot of objectives for you to pick from, but it's most likely going to get settled with a team fight because that's what Golden Guardians top is built for. And Golden Guardians have to make sure they don't let that fight rock their mental because one more big fight like that, and you're probably done. You talked about the scaling of the Cassiopeia, of the Zaya, a big table turner like that comes up again, Golden Guardians will find themselves so offset, not only in tempo, but just in the gold and the control of the game, it's probably slipped out of their grasp at that point. The next big play needs to be another huge one with Expecial going in and finding the right targets. And ideally it's Rakara. He's way ahead of the Varus at this point in the game. Three and a half items basically completed. Um, and so he'll do a ton of damage. You can look for the Casio as well. Either of those backline threats are the ones you need to eliminate instantly. They've won the fights where they've managed to do that, lost the ones where they couldn't. Yep. It's no surprise. Well, the charge, I believe, was sounded there by Jenkins to get away. He smelled something funny going on. He knew they were coming after him, so he wanted to be better safe than sorry, using the ultimate defensively to get himself out. But without that tool available, that's another initiation element that the Golden Guardians don't have. Linsanity moving forward. Twin Fang after Twin Fang into Potluck, getting the ultimate away from the Sejuani. Expecial thinking about going in here. It's Jenkins on the flank. Galio also going to be making the grand entrance. Linsanity taken low, not going to be taken down. Kaizen, the first one to fall. The locket comes out. Levi unstoppable on the front part of the line there. Bobchin getting himself away just barely. Rikara going on a rampage. The Golden Guardians here in some trouble. Jurassic the next to go down, and 100 Thieves find the fight. Once again, a number of initiation tools used at different points in time. You talk about the Cloud Alt being used to get away. The Sejuani Alt gets thrown out to protect from the engage that was coming in from 100 Thieves. Then the Galio Alt comes in. They were able to find some members of 100 Thieves, their front line still being able to be killed, but at the same time, the enemy team is killing your front line even faster. This is an interesting fight here between Potluck and Linsanity as the Drake is secured the? by the side of the Golden Guardians and Linsanity sticks around way too long, but he may have baited the Golden Guardians into a bad spot here as well. Rakara looking to chase down Potluck. The Sejuani needs a little more time to ready the Arctic Assault, try to get himself away here. Nope, those feathers are a bit too sharp. That was one of those plays where I was, you know, rambling about what just happened because it's so obvious that you should get some neutral objectives and keep playing yep. the game. Anyways, here's what we're going to talk about. See, Sejuani has nothing much coming in. There's the Leona ult on top. Here finally comes the Galio ult. None of this is synced up. You know, it was actually a late cleanse by Linsanity, meaning he still got hit by that, but he's still in the area to do a lot of damage. No one's on Rakara anymore. He's just free firing from the back line. Goes in, drops his ult on top of multiple members. Yes, they have killed a couple people of 100 Thieves, just a sign actually, because they still have decent damage on their end, but if it's not killing the back line, you're going to lose those fights. Uh, and then somehow, like I said, I don't know what 100 Thieves did. I saw a bunch of people in the mid lane and a Cassio on her own doing Dragon or something. The rest of the team was pushing up, trying to make an objective push towards those turrets, and Cassio's like, don't worry guys, I'll solo the Drake. But the Sejuani's still there, so you can't solo the Drake because you'll the Kled. steal it. And then Kled comes around, and then Cassiopeia's like, wait, I can't solo this anymore. <laughs> Dies and lost the dragon. That's actually, you know, as much as we're laughing about it, a disaster. Yep. In terms of game circumstance. That second Infernal, we were talking about all these scaling advantages and this and that. Well, now there's 16% damage that you will not be able to catch up on. Lion thinking about these initiations. We've seen some fantastic ult into knock-up combinations from this guy so far. One more could end the game. Especial though, both supports, honestly, this game, Mark, have been so instrumental in setting up their team's successes. They both have big playmaking, they both have initiation, they've both got CC for days and days, and they've used it successfully. When their team wins, it's through proper setup through them. Absolutely, and the fights that they lose, it's usually because they have not been able to start the fight on their terms. You saw that one, the bot lane, kicked off by Wyan, CCing tanks underneath the turret that his front line could melt down. That fight, Expecial tried to start it, but was not actually able to land it on anyone. He gets kited out. Supports are the go buttons. Supports are the go buttons. Looking at the gold, where it all stands right now. You got about a 2,000 lead there for your Kled. Pretty close in the jungle. Mid lane, 1,500 gold going the way of the Galio, but that bottom lane, two and a half thousand gold, a little bit more even, separating the 80 carries. You already talked about how 
The Zaya is so strong in the late game, and with full build, it's that much scarier. Here comes Scion into the heart of the fight. Kaizen's able to find the slam. There's your follow-up. Wyan's able to melt that Sejuani before anything else can even happen. 100 Thieves now pulling themselves back. Nice ulti coming in from Linsanity. Looking to find even more now. Jurassic knocked up into the air. One more Twin Fang likely going to be able to find him here. Levi goes for the ulti and finds himself the kill. Special still looking to grab something off the back end of the fight. He gets Wyan, but they also get him. It's three for one for 100 Thieves. And there's only a Kled and Galio up. Cassio, uh-oh. Well, Insanity committing the same sin he may have committed last time, but he has backup this time. If they can take him down, it could still go the wrong way. Jenkins remounting, getting Scarl back means this fight still could go their way. Levi's got to be careful here. He knows he'll be the target. But meanwhile, mid lane, Rakara just pushes up by himself. Levi in some trouble, knocked up into the air. Chain CC trying to provide some protection. Levi still barely getting himself away. Bear Trap on a rope just slightly tags him, but Levi manages to get himself out. What is going on in this game, Mark? I Inhibitor died mid lane, by the way. I don't think Linsanity wants to win. I, I, be <laughs> I believe he wants more camera time. That's my best guess, because I don't know why you don't push mid with 40 second death timers and your 80 carry mid laner alive against the Galio. Well, has six items by the way. Yes, yeah, yeah. I don't know why you don't push to try and end the game. This is another good example of how strong the backline is. You see them just obliterate Potluck, has no chance there. And from there, the fight's basically over. Linsanity gets a really nice ult there onto multiple members, able to allow his team to continue to chase them down. They kill Jurassic easily enough. And then, I don't know why he does it, but he continues to chase people for kills instead of going up the mid lane. They do get an inhibitor, but then that staggers their back timings, and they lose a Baron buff. Okay, the game has devolved into utter chaos. Golden Guardians have secured themselves the Baron. 100 Thieves currently own the downed inhibitor on the map. They have those super minions flowing into the mid lane. Their own middle inhibitor is exposed. Elder Drake is spawning in one minute, and if Golden Guardians get it, it is an absolutely incredible win condition, considering they've got four Drakes, two of which are Infernals, but the past three fights in a row have gone the way of the Thieves. Yeah, this is one of those crazy games where Golden Guardian's comp is much more early game focused, uh, and then it felt like they threw. Hold on here, we got a team fight coming. The charge comes in, the front line takes their spot. Galio looks to make his way into the fight, but so much damage already down onto a special. Wyan now might be in some trouble. Jenkins gonna be dismounted. The back line of the Thieves still gonna be holding on for now, but the Golden Guardians continue pushing up. Bobchin finds the kill on the Kaizen. Expecial barely getting himself away, ultimately gonna fall now. Linsanity escaping the counterattack from Bobchin, grabbing himself the double kill, and Golden Guardians have to back away. Two for one. Good play on the side of 100 Thieves. I like the fact that they forced that fight up against the Baron buffed opponent. They don't want to risk getting it set up into a siege situation, so you pull the trigger in the middle of the map. They're able to trade up two for one. Good play by them. I like what they're looking for there. And the point I was getting into prior to that fight is that it was one of those games where 100 Thieves fell behind early game. Golden Guardians had the objective control, but then they reached a point in the game where they outscaled and they should be winning but their play in the late game hasn't been clean enough to actually secure it, and now the game is at that kind of knife's edge where, yes, 100 Thieves team comp is much better at late game team fighting, but the other team has a lot more uh, neutral objectives. This time, they're gonna be able to take this Elder Dragon away, but with no dragons of their own, it's really not gonna do much. When they get the second one, maybe then it will be much stronger, but they have a while to go until then. The Elder Drake over to 100 Thieves by some time, but here's the fight that got us there. Absolutely, and it's just one of those engages that didn't work out super cleanly, and you can see just the slight lack of damage on the side of Golden Guardians, as well as the fact that they have a hard time getting forward. It's basically all on the uh, Varus pick there, and he was kiting through, but there was a Miasma blocking his path. He couldn't get onto the Cassio, so he has a really hard time bringing the damage to the backline. If they're not able to land a good chain CC onto the members of Hunter Thieves' backline, which is hard to do against a Cleanse and Mercurial Scimitar, then there's really not much backline damage to actually threaten them. This game, Mark, a game that looked like it was in the hands of Golden Guardians, a fight at the bottom lane tier two that turns things around, an incredible moment for 100 Thieves to be able to go five for zero in a situation like that has led us now to an in-game situation balancing on a knife's edge in favor of 100 Thieves. Still, I would say, but that could go either way. It, and in all honesty, they probably should have won the game. The way they came back was was really amazing. I mean, it was a lot of their own plays and, and uh, decisions that won them back into this game in some sense when they found the two pickoffs after camping in the bot lane. 
to stall out the Baron when they found the fight down there where they locked people up. That was all their decision making. But since then, a couple questionable decisions by some individuals have left them in some situations where they end up with a lot less than they should after successful plays. All right, Baron buff's got itself five seconds left. That'll soon expire. Elder Drake buff looking at having about a quarter of that duration left still ticking. 100 Thieves want to make a play with it while they still have it. Even if it's not enchanted at all with any basic elemental drakes, it's still a combat edge that you otherwise wouldn't have. They take down the tier two in the top side. They pressure onto the inhibitor turret. This could very well be the final fight of the game if Golden Guardians cannot hold here. Keep your eyes on Wyan. Keep your eyes on Expecial. Those are the two that have been responsible for so much this game. Potluck, Bobchin, Levi, Kaizen. We've seen follow-up initiation from them. And from Kaizen, we've seen him starting things off at the charge, but it's ultimately those supports that have been making so many moves this game. Absolutely, and like we said, Golden Guardians need to find one of the backline members and lock them down long enough for the Kled or Galio to deliver enough damage to kill them. There's no way for Varus to, to really get that damage off onto the Cassio or Zaya. And I mean, it's a full AP Galio, so if you're able to lock one of those members in place for his Winds of War to hit and tick on them a couple times, those people are probably going to die. It's just yeah. very hard to keep them locked down because even if you land one CC, that's when the QSS comes in, that's where the cleanse comes in, and they start kiting out of your, your abilities. Death timers are going to start getting so ridiculously long, too. Oh, yeah. That eventually, the game just has to end. No matter what happens, one of these times, we're going to get a 70-second death timer that results in a Nexus blowing up, even if it's on the other end of the map. Well, and it'll probably just be a tank, you know, all things considered. It's going to be one of those things where Kaizen ults in, hits Sejuani, and one of the two of them dies, and the enemy team can kite forward, and then you don't have your main front line anymore. A bit of an anticlimactic finale. I'm just setting the picture that it... I know, I know. That but might I still be want to how dream. it ends. I still want to dream. We'll see if the Golden Guardians can hold the line here. The Miasma down into Potluck will break the Frost Armor, which can actually be a pretty big deal when it comes to tanking the brunt of the initial burst of the enemy team. He wants to try to regain that as quickly as possible. That will be back up in just a moment here. All right, should go. Good to go. Bob Chin on that front line with the magic shield. Pretty fine about hanging out in that miasma, quite honestly. Golden Guardian still wanting to defend this inhibitor. I mean, if you can't win a fight in open ground at this point, probably going to be hard to win any kind of a fight at all. I don't see 100 Thieves wanting to dive in between your Nexus turrets for you. Yeah, this is an awkward situation where 100 Thieves are perfectly happy to fight front to back, and so they like being in this kind of siege situation. Uh, but there's too many turrets too close behind this inhibitor to really force their own fight. So Golden Guardians don't want to force because it's on 100 Thieves' terms. The 100 Thieves don't want to force because of map position. So you're getting a little bit of a stalemate here. Everybody's stuck in just slightly too imperfect of a spot. Still only 2,000 gold separating the teams, though. And once you're 80,000 gold deep into a game of League of Legends, 2,000 doesn't mean a whole lot. We're not... It's an even... even. Goal. We're not six minutes into the game anymore. It doesn't really have a huge impact on exactly who's going to do what. It all comes down to how you execute, who plays it right, who gets misplayed, who gets outplayed. Special, you can tell just by the way he's posturing, he wants to make something happen here. Oh, here we go. And it looks like this could very well be it. Rakara already utilizing the ulti. The charge comes in. Jenkins thinking about making something maybe happen here. Golden Guardians, they pop one of their initiation mechanisms. They pop a couple of them. But at the same time, 100 Thieves had to use a pretty big tool in the Zaya ultimate. Over the wall goes Wyan. There's that initiation I'm talking about. Golden Guardian still looking to go in. Full force, five minutes strong. Kaizen able to find the slam onto a couple of different people. Galio ulti comes in, but Rakar is able to slam him back down before he can go up in the air. Golden Guardians are routed. That's a double kill for Rakara. 100 Thieves. It was a long road getting here, but that is the quadra kill into the ace that will lead them to win this game. It took a couple more fights than needed, but 100 Thieves finally kill all five members. There's nowhere to go but straight up the mid lane. They already have the inhibitor turret down. They're grabbing the inhibitor, and they'll be grabbing the game, keeping themselves alive. There's in a, still in a mathematical in world, in a mathematical world, to find a playoff spot in that fourth remaining available position. 100 Thieves did it. Man, I can't believe it came to that down. They did it the hard way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they did it about I, as rough as it could be. I liked both teams' drafts. 100 Thieves 
grabbing a ton of power picks for themselves. Golden Guardians going for the very counter pick early game focus. Both teams executing largely on their game plans. And then, like we talked a little bit about in the beginning of the day, you're in an elimination game. The pressure is on. And when you get yep. to these late game situations, you could tell that the stress was getting to some of these players. Well, let's talk about how Golden Guardians started this thing strong because we got to see a re we're going to see a replay right now. 26 minutes into the game, they get three for one and they turn it into fair. This was a fight that finally resulted in a big lead for Golden Guardians. They had found a lot of pickoffs over the course of the game, but weren't able to turn them into big advantages. This time, next to the Baron, they're able to find the Cassio right away. Rakara is doing a lot of damage, but comes back down after his ultimate. He gets dropped as well. Expecial is able to live. It's a five for three. They're right next to Baron. They grab the Baron and then they're able to use a Siege Minion right away to take a mid inhibitor. And so you're thinking, all right, they're going to close this game out. But then 100 Thieves starts finding all these fights. And the biggest one, 30 minutes into the game, ace for free in the bottom lane at the Tier 2 turret. This is what ultimately turns the game around. Oh, man, it's been a while since I've seen such a beautifully executed, you know, wombo combo of abilities. But here you see them just locking down people under the turret. They know they have good frontline damage. They're trying to keep them there, and then they just group up too much. And you get the three-man knockup into the other three-man knockup into the uh, Zaya ult on top. The Cassio's pumping out damage. All that CC hits them, and then Jurassic just can't quite get away. When Sanity gets that last kill, they get that ace there, and that is what catapults them back into the game. And I don't know if catapult's the right word. It's more mm. of like a little trolley because it, a catapult is sudden and impactful, and it's it's quick. It flings that it's an ace that, that rock. Yeah, yeah. But it flung the rock forward, and then we had to push the rock forward into the enemy base because it took a while before we finally got to see this upcoming replay. One hundred thieves finally closing out the game. Rakara with the quadra kill. They catapulted it up a hill. It rolled down a little bit, and then they had and then they had to push it back up. All right, I'll accept that. I'll accept that. And here's here's how the game plan that they fought things. They don't care who they engage on they just want an open area fight where they're melting frontline they're trading frontliners and they just have so much more backline damage at this point with the Zyra Khan that they're able to find all these kills it's really hard for the immobile carries of the side of Golden Guardians to step forward and deal damage at the same time so they're able to win these fights very definitively that was like the third or fourth fight in a, a row that they had won pretty easily so no surprise to see 100 Thieves walking away with the victory from that point well you've heard Mark and I talk about it for the past 45 minutes but now to hear more about that victory Victory, I'd like to welcome 100 Thieves Academy coach Joseph Jang to the broadcast via Skype. Welcome, Joseph. Hey, guys, thank you so much uh, for the introduction. I mean, that win was uh, crazy. Yeah. Like, it was like a thriller from the entire mid and late game. So, speaking a little bit about the draft, we've been talking a lot about Zyra right. Khan. Uh, this was one of the better yeah. attempts, I think, by the opponent to try and counter it. Uh, what were your thoughts just on that draft a little bit and how it looked to you? So, we knew that Jurassic was like a really big Varus player. So we were kind of hesitant on giving it to him, but we were really confident in our Zaya, um, our Khan combo. Um, I think the Galio made things really hard, but we kind of offsetted that with the Cassio with Nrexai. So we had kind of like establish and block plays through mid. Um, we kind of like fucked up on that, like in the early game. So, you know, like, the game got really, really hard towards mid, but we definitely did our best to recover in mid late. Now, we're obviously getting towards the end of the regular split. It's crunch time. Every game matters, right. determining whether or not you get into the playoffs or not. What has the team environment been like? Because obviously, things were good enough for the team to stay level-headed, stay cool, come back in this game. What are things like right now with the 100 Thieves Academy team as a whole? Um, so, actually, we had this conversation after like some of our broadcast losses like the past two weeks. And essentially, even if we don't make playoffs, like, why are we here in the first place, right? We're here to improve. And it took a really long time because that's easy to sell, easy to sell to your players. But mm -hmm. it's really hard for your players to actually believe that. So, you know, we've been trying to stick to that motive and, you know, just just trying to win. Even if we don't make playoffs, let's just try to win every single game. That's kind of how we're thinking about this, taking it game by game. Right, and obviously a lot of the storyline around your team at the start of the season was like waiting for Levi to get here, then he shows up, and there's there's clearly right. some difficulties in integrating him. So, you know, a little bit right. behind the scenes look, you, how good is his English? What are you guys doing to work with him? What's the future hold for Levi a little bit? Okay, so not quite sure what we're doing with Levi quite yet. Can't comment on that, but um, his English is definitely improving. We have, like, English tutor set up for him so that he can be integrated into our communication system. There's obviously been some communication issues, but, you know, a lot of our players um, that were here before Levi, they've been doing their best to, you know, kind of help him integrate into the team. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's been 
pretty smooth so far. There's obviously still small bumps, but you know we're trying to like cover those up as like the slip progresses. Well, thank you very much for joining us here for this post-game interview. Again, it was an incredible comeback from 100 Thieves Academy. Yeah. And you guys, it's good to see you all still alive in the running for playoffs. And best of luck moving forward and trying to secure that final spot. Thanks so much, guys. All right, everybody, with week eight complete, let's see how the teams are stacked heading into the final week of regular season competition. Cloud9 has tied FlyQuest in first place with Team Liquid sitting in third. Echo Fox still holds the last playoff spot, but CLG, TSM, and 100 Thieves are still within striking distance. However, with their losses today, Clutch and Optic have been eliminated from the postseason. Those results bring us to the point where we have reached the end of today's Academy broadcast, but the NALCS returns tomorrow afternoon where Clutch Gaming will try to solidify their reputation as a top team against Echo Fox in Game 1. After that, TSM faces off against Team Liquid in Game 4 later on, so be sure to join Kobe and the team owners, Reggie and Steve, on NALCS Lounge at twitch.tv slash riotgames2 if you want to get all the insider information from those guys about exactly what's going on in that matchup. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool games coming up tomorrow. I think Clutch versus Echo Fox is one that I'm personally interested in. I know mm -hmm. uh, they, Clutch is kind of come in as the definitive number team at the number three team it feels like but we're wondering where their ceiling is because they haven't had any you know statement victories so to speak and then of course that featured matchup with reggie oh, and yeah. steve they talk a lot of smack in person uh so i can't wait to see them a little bit more unfiltered in that situation time to put your money where your mouth is mm -hmm. we'll see if they can make that happen but if you're looking for more league right now coming up is the rebroadcast of this morning's eu lcs matches which you can watch late into the night and then wake up early for their live day two broadcast starting at 8 a.m pacific 5 p.m central european we know a lot of y'all love league of legends who you likes get it sleep? around the clock who needs sleep when you got league of legends coming your way now for myself for mark and for the entire academy crew thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week Gets his mount back, wants to try to get away. The Miasma keeps him down. Bear Trap on a rope will not find its way onto a Cassiopeia. Now the Kled charges into the fight. They're able to find some lockdown there onto Rakar. The Golden Guardian still looking to make more plays happen here. They lock down Levi. They burst him down. Wyan's already gone. Lin Sanity's still alive. Able to find the kill onto the Golden Guardian's AD carry. Still putting out that damage. Bobchin gets him with the Winds of War. Finds the double kill. Counterattack comes out from Golden Guardian. able to find the lockdown onto Lin Sanity. But more CC. Whoa. Multiple knockups. Golden Guardian are absolutely destroyed. Galliwalti comes in, but Rakar is able to slam him back down before he can go up in the air. Golden Guardians are routed. That is the quadra kill in the ace.